victims, and uh, she was the strongest witness for herself to her own murder. 911, Baker, any police fire? Oh, absolutely, I've been shot. I'm eight months pregnant. Okay, ma'am, you're eight months pregnant. You've been shot. You're at Wessex. Can you know what kind of car it was? No. Where's your husband at? I don't have one. Or your boyfriend, the one you said that was with you. Where's he, he at? He was in the car in front of me, and he slowed down, and somebody pulled up and said, I'm in this. And then where'd he go? He just left. Okay. All right, what's his name? Ray Caruthi, Ray Caruthi. Okay, what's his name? Ray Caruthi. Ray Caruthi. Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to detail the story of ex-NFL player Ray Caruth. Ray Caruth was born in Sacramento, California on January 20th, 1974. Being raised in South Sacramento was tough, with many local gangs in close proximity to where Ray grew up. He grew up in the Valley High section of South Sac. That included enemy gangs like the Valley High Gangster Crips and the Valley High Parus. But Ray was always a great athlete, so that kept him away from the streets, unlike many people he grew up with. Ray became a star athlete at Valley High School, and this led to him receiving D1 scholarships from many colleges. Ray would later accept a scholarship at Colorado, where Ray would play with future NFL players like Cordell Stewart. Even though things were going great on the field for Ray, but with the fame he was receiving, came the women, and that was a weakness for Ray. He had a kid while he was in college, and with a guaranteed future in the NFL, he was put on child support. With his four years at Colorado, Ray performed well leading to him getting drafted in the 1997 NFL Draft with the 27th pick of the first round by the Carolina Panthers. He signed a four-year deal, worth $3.7 million, and included a $1.3 million signing bonus. Ray had a respectable rookie season in 1997. He started in 14 games and caught 44 passes for 545 yards and had four TDs. He tied first among rookie receivers and was even named to all-rookie team. Ray broke his right foot in the opening game in 1998 and did not catch another pass that season due to the injury. He ended the year with four catches for 59 yards. In June of 1998, Ray would meet Sharika Adams at a pool party and the two would start seeing each other. Sharika was born June 30th, 1975 in North Carolina. She was raised mostly by her mom, Sandra Adams, and Sharika would let her go to college where she went on to be a real estate agent. Ray wouldn't take this relationship that serious, with him being a ladies man and having a lot of women, so Sharika was more into him than he was into her. This would all lead up to Sharika getting pregnant by Ray in 1999, but this wasn't something Ray wanted. Ray by this time already had a kid and didn't want any more, especially with someone he didn't want to be with, so he wanted Sharika to get an abortion, but she refused. Ray couldn't accept this, and he would make sure to make a plan that she didn't have a baby. Around the same time, Ray met a man named Van Brett Watkins. Van was a security guard at a strip club and was a known criminal, spending time in prison for various charges and having a reputation on the streets as being a killer. With Ray knowing Van's reputation, he became interested in having Van take care of his situation with Sharika. He wanted Van to beat Sharika into a miscarriage, but Van told Ray, I don't beat girls, I kill people. Ray agreed to pay Van to kill Sharika. He would pay half up front and pay the other half when the job was done. For several months, they couldn't come up with a time and a place to kill Sharika. So this led all the way up to November of 1999, when Sharika was eight months pregnant. November 16th, 1999, the plan was set. Ray was set to take Sharika to the movies that night. Hours before, Ray had Van and another man named Michael over his house where they planned to kill him. The plan was Ray and Sharika would meet up at the movies and Ray would call when he was ready for them to finish the job. That night, Ray and Sharika would go to the movies where they would see Bone Collector, which ended around midnight. The two would plan to leave together in their cars and meet at Ray's house. Sharika would be falling behind Ray's car and Ray would pull alongside of the road out of nowhere. Sharika did the same thing and something happened. Moments later, a car pulled alongside of Sharika's car and started shooting, shooting Sharika several times before driving off. Ray would soon drive off as well, leaving Sharika shot and holding on to dear life. Sharika managed to call 911 and told them everything that happened. 911, I've been shot. You've been shot. Where are you at, man? I'm eight months pregnant. How'd this happen? Uh 
Sharika's mom, Sandra, would get a call, and it would be a call that no parent would want to hear, that her daughter had been shot and was fighting for her life. Sharika would be rushed to the hospital, where she was given an immediate C-section to remove her baby boy, who had been without oxygen. Being shot four times, Sharika had suffered serious damage. Sharika's family would arrive to the hospital, and soon would raise shortly after. He was with another woman, acting like he'd never seen Sharika the whole night. Sharika would manage to rat out to the police what happened, and just like the 911 call, she would pin the shooting on Ray. But that would be the last thing she did, with her health getting worse and her going into a coma. The baby would make it and be named Chancellor, but he would suffer from serious medical issues, being brain damage and cerebral palsy. The police immediately began investigating and went through Ray's phone records, and seeing he talked to Sharika and met with her that night, and even traced phone calls to Ray's hitman. Van and Michael. This all led to Ray, Van who was the shooter, and Michael being the driver being arrested. Ray posted a $3 million bond on the condition that if Sharika or their child died, he would turn himself in. Sharika would be took off life support and died on December 14, 1999. Ray then soon fled. Ray was assisted by a woman named Wendy. She agreed to assist his escape and she drove him out of Charlotte. Ray would ride inside the trunk their entire time. Ray's mom told the police he might be in Tennessee, which he was. He was found in Tennessee out of Best Western parking lot inside the trunk of Wendy's car. The next day after being arrested, Ray was released by the Panthers and suspended by the NFL. His career was over. The trial will soon begin and Ray's attorney would argue that that was not Ray's character to do anything like that and say he wanted the baby and would even have his teammates speak in his defense. Instead of a hit, they would argue that Van killed Sharika to get even with Ray after a bad business deal. And they even had Van take the stand thinking he would agree to those statements. But he would say that wasn't true. And he would say he was hired by Ray to kill Sharika. And he would say much more. That statement, Sharika Adams was fighting for her life, right? Did the captain tell you what happened that day? My question is, Sharika Adams was fighting for her life, wasn't she? She was, but this this wasn't about Sharika Adams. It was about the person who got me involved in all this. For six months, the client did this. This wasn't a one day affair. It was for six months, he dragged me into something that I didn't want to be involved with. Your client. There it is. Uh-huh. Who, who didn't stand up. Who didn't say, look, I did this. Look, I am sorry. I did this. I'm going to, I'm going to, what he said was, I'm going to save myself after the murder. Uh-huh. You're defending this. Were you, were you hoping that Miss Adams died? I got a second degree murder charge. The rest of my life in prison. If she would have lived, I wouldn't have the rest of my life in prison. Sir. So you could answer that question. Even Michael would get on the stand and tell on Ray and tell his role in the crime. Um, this girl that he had got pregnant, which I found out later was Sharika. And he was saying that um, she was trying to juice him for money and he was already paying like almost $5,000 in child support. And he didn't want to pay another 5,000 in child support. And um, he said the guy, which I found out later was Watkins, he had paid him to beat up Sharika so that she would lose the baby. And uh, he was saying that he hadn't done it yet and he had already paid him. And um, he said that he needed a gun because he wanted to do it that night. This wouldn't go good for Ray. Even his baby mama would come forth and would say Ray was an abuser and even said he threatened her before when she didn't terminate her pregnancy. This trial lasted 11 weeks and had 70 witnesses. On January 19, 2000, Ray would be charged with several crimes and was sentenced to 18 years in prison. 
Van Watkins was sentenced to a minimum of 40 years for the murder of Sharika. Michael received 11 years in prison for his role in the crime, being a driver. Ray would do interviews while in prison, and he would still state that he was innocent. Van Watkins would do his own interviews. I got fed up and I said, okay, let's get it done. You're, did you pick the place or was the place supposed to be random? He picked the place. Okay. Rear Road. Ray Road, Dark Road, Black Night, No Lights, Black BMW, Black Tinted Windows. Everything was black that night. Did he expect that this would just be done and it would never come back to him? I told him that uh, you're the first person they're going to come to and they're going to grill you because of my experience with the law. I said, they're going to grill you. They're going to grill you. They're going to grill you. Did he not believe you? He was conceited. He thought life was all about him. He thought he was the man. Then why'd you want to work for him? Greed. For $50,000 for five seconds work, I'm going to take that money. Did you really think it would be that easy and you'd get away with it? My fault is that I didn't do like a hitman should do. Which is? Kill everybody on the scene. Van is still currently locked up and has done many interviews about what he did. Ray would be released after 19 years in prison. Shortly after, he moved to Pennsylvania. After being released, Ray tried to reach out to his son and even mention one in custody, but Sharika's mom, Sandra, wouldn't want that to happen at all. For the loss of her daughter and, and taking responsibility for what happened, I don't want it to harm Miss Adams. I, I guess, honestly, I just want to truly be forgiven. Caruth and Sandra Adams have both told me they wanted Chancellor Lee to meet his father. Over the past few months, they wrote to each other trying to work something out. The meeting never happened. It's unfortunate, too, because I was really looking forward to the opportunity to see my son, uh, to touch him, to hug him, to kiss him. You know, all these things that I've never had an opportunity to do. Um, <laughs> And I wanted to apologize to him in person for all that he's been. Sharika's mom, Sandra, raised Sharika and Ray's son, Chancellor, his whole life. And even with the difficulties he faced with cerebral palsy and brain damage because of his dad's decisions, he is thriving the best way he can. And with his grandmother's help, he graduated high school. He did. Today he's 21 years old and getting ready to walk across the graduation stage this weekend. WBTV Steve Crump sat down with him and Sandra Adams, his grandmother, who has cared for him all these years. They say it's been a long journey, but there's been some help from above. You doing it graduation march, Chancellor Lee. Call it a dress rehearsal, leading to one of life's big steps. <laughs> Later this week, Chancellor Lee Adams achieves a meaningful milestone. He's graduating from Charlotte's Vance High School. I have seen Chancellor's um, determination, how he persists through things, his resilience in overcoming so many of the odds. Beating tough odds meant being born with brain damage and cerebral palsy on the same night. His pregnant mother, Sharika Adams, was fatally shot back in 1999. She held on long enough to save her son's life. Sharika was only 24 years old when she died and didn't get to live her life or be a mother. RIP to her. Ray is said now to be working and is now 49 and trying to pick up the pieces back in his life. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.